It's time for us to tell you everything. Last time we left you on a major cliffhanger as we finished our double engine installation and were just about to push the button to see if all the hard work had been worth it. But don't worry, this time we'll kick off right where we left you. All right, let's see what happens. Starting in three, two, one. I know it seems silly, but this has been a mammoth journey for us. And I don't know if this is going to work on the first try. There's a good chance it won't. But, uh, you know, if it does, we want to capture the moment so you see exactly how ridiculously exciting it is. Are you ready? I think so. All right, put the key to whistle. All right, key going to whistle. Whistling here. All right, let's see what happens. Starting in three, two, one. I've let go of the button. It's working. <laughs> you have any fresh water coming out? Yeah. So what you need is Yeah, there wasn't at first, but it's now coming out. It looks great. <laughs> She's alive! So I came back up into the cockpit and it is so quiet. With the old Yanmars, we were having to be like raising our voices slightly in the cockpit to be able to have a conversation. I know it's only a neutral, but the engine bay door is completely open. And uh, if I walk inside, I basically can't tell that the engine is running. That is just absolutely wild. This is ridiculous. So this is our cabin, so it's still a mess right now, but you could sleep in here, like. Yeah, that's... That's nuts. That's crazy manageable. Like, most of that noise is actually making it back through the conduit through that the, the vent, control, yeah. that, uh, control line goes through. Go on, have a nap. That's, that's wild. <laughs> I'm hearing that through the window. What's beeping? Oh. So we had to run a little bit quickly to the helm there. Um, the port engine started to overheat and we heard a whistle. So we've come and turned it off, uh, but we're going to wait for it to cool down before we can really investigate why. Um, and in the meantime, we're going to try the starboard engine. OK, engine number two. I think, I think we're good to go. Go on, fire it up, Brian. All right, here we go. That one started sooner. It did. I'm just watching the water getting really caught up. Yeah, no water at the exhaust here yet. This is quite fun because you can actually see how the water from the uh, raw water inlet comes into the engine, comes out through the siphon loop and back down, and it's slowly filling up the siphon loop, which is perfect. That'll then vent the air out to get rid of that, and we'll uh, always have water ready to feed the engine. So. It just takes a second to catch up, and that time it's just warming up the engine, obviously. Belt's running, the air intake is uh, is good. I can actually feel it sucking air in, so that's good. And hopefully the coolant's running around it. We'll see. Do we have raw water? We have raw water! All right, so everything seems happy on the starboard engine. We are going to try upping the revs, so I'm going to pop the uh, throttle out of gear and then just slowly increase the revs and see what happens. You ready to go? Yeah, go for it. Let's go down. Okay, I'm going to have to put the radio down because I think I need two hands to get the throttle out of gear. Revving up. So far, so good. That's me at 1800 RPM. Temperature's gone up a little bit, oil pressure up a little bit. That's all we need, okay? That's good. And I've got a temperature. No, I've got a temperature alarm. I'm going to come back to neutral. And turning off. Hmm. 
So both engines have the same problem where they're not quite staying cool enough. We'll figure it out. Ideas? We, um, so we gave a call to Peter over at Nally Australia. And I feel really bad because it's Sunday. It's like I Sunday know. afternoon right now. I know, he's such a legend. He's amazing. He, he was the one, we texted him, we're like, oh, we've got a bit of an issue, we're not sure what's going on. Uh, but we're sure it's fine, we just don't quite know, maybe we can deal with it later. And he's like, oh, I'll give me a call. And then we phoned him kind of discreetly, went, nah, give us a video call, I'll show you what I'm talking about. And we literally pointed around the engine and he told us exactly what he thinks the issue might be. It makes a lot of sense. It's really, really obvious. So th the basics, I'll show you down there, but essentially the engine is manufactured that way with a coolant cap where we pour the coolant in, coolant. However, that would be fine if we took that off and filled the coolant tank to the top, but our engine is mounted like that. <laughs> so when we fill the tank to the top here, this corner of the tank is air. And we reckon that that's just an airlock, which eventually when the engine's getting warmer, is effectively getting caught up in the system and not letting the thermostat, which is mounted in the exchanger right here under the coolant cap, it's then not fully opening, which is then triggering the thermal alarm. So all we need to do is add in a bit more coolant. A bit more coolant to an entry point that he showed us that's further up the engine, if that makes yes, sense. Which like, I definitely would not have spotted on my own. That's it. Well, yeah, it's not a cap, it's a bolt. But it's take the bolt out, pour the coolant in until it is full, and then we'll run this one and see how that goes. And if it works, then we can just do exactly the same thing on the other side. Easy, easy breezy. It really is that simple. <laughs> yeah, that's gone down. Perfect, that, that guarantees, or guarantees that confirms the theory. So we filled this one actually probably a little bit too high um, <laughs> when we filled it up. And now there's like that much space, which means that the coolant has gotten through past the thermostat, but this is all now one big air gap. So rather than filling from this one, the game is to pour higher up, because as you can see, the engine's on a tilt, which is this, this is actually higher than this. So this is a better location to fill the coolant from. Mm, this is going to be tight. We don't have a smaller funnel, do we? Uh, I do, but I have to go and clean it. Well, I couldn't find the smaller funnel, um, so instead we've got a sandwich bag and cut the corner off and made it into like an icing bag that you would use for baking. Maybe it'll work. Definitely becoming more your domain than mine at this point. <laughs> like, I get the idea, but I have no idea how I'm going to stop pouring too much coolant in. <laughs> yeah, that's always going to be fun, isn't it? We'll just do a little bit at a time. I guess so. The sandwich bag is split, there's an extra hole in the bottom now. The sandwich bag is peeing out the corner. <laughs> so last time we managed to run the engine for pretty much exactly five minutes before the temperature alarm went off. So I've set a timer on my phone and we're going to see if we can get more than five minutes. Ideally like, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, ideally no alarm. Um, yeah, it's, it's wait and see now. Well, we've beaten the record. It has been nine minutes now and no overheating alarm. And so Ian's getting impatient and he's putting some uh, load on the engine. Just encouragement. Nothing more than encouragement. Nothing wrong with encouragement. So I think that's about, on. yeah, that's about as high as I got last time. That's so up to. And we did it for like a minute and then it overheated, so. We're at 2,000 revs. Leave it that for a bit. That's us at almost 10 minutes now. We have an engine, it works. I'm declaring it because the alarm hasn't gone off and the temperature has gone to what, 75 degrees Celsius? Oil oh, pressure is not going through the scale, so that's great. RPM's holding nicely. That's hey, amazing! How does it feel to be a chief mechanic? Oh yes, that's me. I did all the work on this project. <laughs> so I definitely didn't appreciate before we started this project how many different systems would all have to come together to all work at the same time to make our engines run. And I just can't get over the fact that we have done everything and somehow we didn't screw it up. Um, yeah, all of, the, all of the plumbing works. The engines haven't fallen off their mounts. Um, there's fuel in the right place where it should be. There's water in the right place. The electricity works. We had one little blip with the coolant and now that seems to be sorted. And uh, I just, I'm just over the moon. We have an engine and it works. And, and as long as it goes forwards and backwards, and we'll check that in a minute, we can go places. Well, the port engine seems happy. Test passed. 
We did it. We actually did it. We have engines. I don't know how. I'm so confused as to how that didn't just blow up in our faces. <laughs> maybe it still will. It might still blow up. Oh, there's know. plenty of time for that, don't you but worry? We've just done a soak test for both of them for about, what? 15? 15, 30 minutes total. Yeah. And neither of them got hot. Neither of them had oil issues. They just yeah. sat there like purring like kittens. They're so yeah. quiet. We've checked all of the hose clips. There was like one or two drips. So we've tightened those up and now they're all fine and happy. Pretty much, yeah. I think we're good. So <sighs> yeah, it's time we stink. We need to have a shower because these clothes reek. Yes. They have every yeah, it's really fluid for an engine. In group. Ah, it's just not nice to think about. Yeah. Go for a shower and then I think we deserve ourselves a celebratory drink. Definitely. I cannot wait. Oh, it's so worth it. I did it! <laughs> so broken. And that is it. We have tested our engines again this morning. They're still working, still amazingly. Working. Incredible. Two days, well, 12 hours, something like that. <laughs> They've worked overnight, which is perfect. They, they run in gear. We can go forward and backwards, both. Yes. I think we're good to go. Yeah, there's nothing else to do here. There's no reason for us to be on the dock. We can escape and find our freedom again. Yes! Oh, I did it! We've literally done it. It's been, what, eight months? We've been with one engine. This is <laughs> I it. I thought yeah. you were going to say in the marina. I was like, no, well, I know it feels like that. It feels like forever. <laughs> no, but like we've had one engine for forever. So now it's like we're free. We can literally go anywhere. We can, yeah. We're going to yeah. have to, okay, so sea trial. We'll just, we'll sea trial. We'll just leave the marina, go up to anchor. If everything goes well, see the world. All right, Deal. let's do it. Turkey! Here we go. Success. All right, step one, engine's working. Happy, happy? Yeah, I can be useful now. Okay, so we're gonna lose the two outsides first. Front line is clear, I'm pulling it in now. Good. Moving to the back line. Back one, all good there? Just untying the back line. Okay. Back line's clear, all lines on board. All clear, all right. I'm ready to uh, ease off for you. It's good. Maybe push me away, please. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so far, the engines are working. Ooh. Get a fender in there or something. Oh, wow. No, 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 no. Almost clear. Merci. Thank you. How bad's the cut? Not bad, it's just a scrape of colour. Yeah, it's a scratch through those pinstripes to show the colour of paint underneath them. Right, just the pinstripes, not two. the fiberglass. Oh, no, 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 it's just oh, showing the paint. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, 1500 RPM. It's official, we are moving both engines. 1500 RPM. I've just updated uh, the INAPV system, so it knows we're moving. Temperatures are good. Pressure is good. There we are. Four knots. Four and a half. There we go. We've got engines live, four gear. I haven't yet integrated the actual data, so this is the telemetry for the engines. That'll come later. And uh, yeah, we're going. Honestly, I can't quite believe it. We've actually done it. We arrived with one busted engine, one limping engine. And uh, I mean, you know, we had friends on dinghies escorting us to the marina. It was that dodgy. And now, and now we're hauling it. We're going at five knots with like 1700 RPM on the new engines. They're both aligned. They're humming away wonderfully. That racket is just Link in the background here making a fuss because we didn't have time to lift Link before we left the marina. But the engines are quiet, like really quiet. And just, they just work. It just works. I can't believe it. Have you admitted our one mistake yet? Um, I'm not sure if we should. <laughs> uh, we did so well. It's properly messing with my brain, actually. Um, yeah, so when we installed the engines, we, we took a guess, OK? We had to gamble, <laughs> and I wasn't too sure if I could remember, and I accidentally may have said that our propellers turn clockwise instead of anticlockwise for forward, which means it doesn't really mean anything. It just means that our throttles are backwards. <laughs> um, so this is forward and this is reverse, which I argue can be something we could get used to if we wanted to, but you're not such a fan of this. No, Ian reckons it would be cool to feel like a jet fighter and be like, exactly. mm, go faster! Pull the throttle towards you to go faster. But I just think tight maneuvering in small spaces, I would absolutely get it wrong and go the wrong way. Easy. All in all, Easy. we for, didn't for do too badly. In reverse. 
<laughs> not to reverse on the steering wheel. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can't just turn around and do it this way. It no, work. it's very weird. I cannot tell you how good it feels to be moving again. There were definite points in the last few weeks where I wasn't sure that we would ever be leaving the marina. <laughs> there were problems that we had to figure out and overcome that I had no idea how we were going to find solutions to. And today, this is what it has all been about. We are back, we are moving, and I feel like our journey starts again now. Here we can, we can go anywhere. All right, first anchoring with the new engines. Got a problem with this guy, I guess. It just stalled. Still got water coming out. Is it just the one or both? This one's happy. Let me check if we've got any ropes caught around the prop there, or any reason like that? Not that I can see. The dinghy line isn't tangled, right? No, the dinghy line is clipped up. Okay. All of these lines are on board. We got it back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's still making the same funky noise. Yeah, same. Don't know what that is. Thumping something. Okay, that means we're just gonna have to do one anchor. What are you doing? Alright. Get the engine the right around. See if we can get ourselves out there. Yeah. The thing is down if I need to jump into it to power forward or anything. But you under your own power? Uh, only one. One's just got an issue. So this very gonna, second it just died. We're going to try and drop here and see how we go. All right, we're getting shallow, right? OK. Anchor's ready. All right, give us an anchor. OK, going down. Could I throw you a rope and have you go that way with it? Help yeah, if you can down. pull this hull back, that can would be great. Get a line? So, in perfect timing, one engine has died out on us, which is a bit odd. But our friend Theo from another boat has just come over in his dinghy and is going to give us a hand to back down. Old school style. I'm not quite sure why it died on us. It just suddenly made a very throbby noise. So, it'd be a bit of an investigation. But it got us this far, which is what we wanted getting off the dock. I just have to fix the windlass. Okay, Theo, if you pause just now. Uh, the windlass has just had to go to manual, so we've not got enough chain out. We've only got about seven meters, so we'll pause for a second. And then when we've got more chain, we'll go back again. Thank you. Okay. Okay, reverse. We're just putting our bridle on. So we're just putting our bridle on now. I'm not entirely sure how much chain we have out, but um, we have some distance from our friend Theo in front and some distance from this boat, so we're gonna just try and get the boat stopped and stable and then we'll probably dive in and check it. Okay, if you can go back a little bit for our bridle. That's the bridle taking up now. Okay. Okay, come right straight. That's you straight. So now you match Theo's reverse with your pushing, yeah? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, we're done. Thank you so much. All right, now to work out what happened with the engine. That was weird. Purring along fine, and then all of a sudden, just spluttery, kind of jolty. Sounds fuel related, but unless you got a diesel leak somewhere, I didn't spot this really bad. I don't know what that would be. It ran so smoothly. The dock all the way up here, not a problem. So, I have to have a think. Thank you. So, not quite the arrival we pictured. But we, we made it. We made it. That counts. <laughs> and to be honest, we still don't need to be on the dock to fix whatever is going on. I'm sure of that. So. Oh, no, exactly. I'd like, much rather be out here. With the party boats that play on all night. So, you yeah, know, welcome I've back missed to them. Paradise. <laughs> that and the uh, stunt plane that likes to do ac aerobatics. Acrobat aerobatics. I aerobatics, yeah. But we're at anchor, and that makes me happy. We're just a little bit awkwardly placed. So, let's get the engine working, and then we'll just we anchor nicely and perfectly enough. Yeah, this anchorage is really strange because it's like 15 meters just right over here and then it's like two meters. And um, as our patrons know, we sort of slightly ran aground a little bit um, before we went into the marina when we tried to come up into the shallows. And there's this kind of steep shelf which everybody wants to get just on the edge of. So we've kind of placed ourselves well. We're a little bit close to this steel guy here. Um, 
but we'll keep an eye on it. So yeah, if we can uh, just figure out what that engine was doing, um, we might re-anchor and do it properly and make sure the anchor is bedded and be happy and everything else and move slightly shallower and give ourselves a bit more space. But ultimately, we're not in the marina anymore. And that just makes me so happy! We kind of alluded earlier to the fact that we'd had a little bit of engine failure. We just heard back from the mechanic who came to check on the port engine and um, it's really not good. Without your help, this story comes to an end. We refuse to believe that this is a problem that cannot be overcome and we are just going to do whatever we can to make this work. We are getting <laughs> twins! We're getting twins, two, two engines. Two engines. Not just one. We're heading into the marina to fit our new engines. Poor Mike and his dinghy just went firing off without him. This is the first stage in what I expect to be many. We are going to deplumb it, drain all the fluids that we can from it, and then we're going to have to figure out how to get it out. So we've got a whole seven centimeters is the only distance we can lift it then. Well, there's a fun problem. Hmm. So this is going to be it. We're going to destroy a little bit of Indy. So it's sliding. Yeah, the whole thing's about to swing to you. We did a thing! Yes. Woohoo! It's almost there. We're just going to move it forward to here and then lift it straight up through the hatch. And we'll be done. I don't even know what to call like it. Like certified destruction. Customs actually have to witness the destruction of the engines. This is engine day! These engines wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support you guys gave us because we were like the end of the light. We broke it already! We've just found out that there is a fairly major cyclone coming through because right now it's cyclone season here in Tahiti. All right, it's going to be really tight. This is really hard in this swell. So the engine is quite far back, but not quite far enough. Our engine is down! What? How did that happen? I honestly don't know. So we've decided to do some fiberglassing work. We thought we'd find it maybe more efficient to spin the boat around and get started on the starboard scoop. Well, I'm not going to pretend like that wasn't just, you know, slightly terrifying. Don't forget that the rule is, I do the physics, you do the cutting and sticking. And I forgot to take the bung out of the dinghy. <gasps> and then we'll just poke that in the hole, try and like hoopla onto the bolt. A bit of luck and hope and just doing the same thing over and over again and seeing if something changes. I hereby present to one, one gracious and wonderful, very worthwhile, Blue Nanny Engine. <laughs> 